Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. Another week, another great interview because our guest this week is the one and only Mary Lynn Wisner. Oh, hi guys. Hi everybody. Thank great you for to having see you. Me. Yeah. Thank you for having me always. This is wonderful. This, this is going to be great. If you have a question for Mary Lynn and after you listen to us talk for a while, it's going to raise all sorts of questions, <laughs> throw them in the Facebook chat room. And also, I think there's a bit of a chat room over in YouTube, wherever, wherever else we're, we're doing this. Uh, and Jeff Holman is sitting there typing out all these answers, making sure we all these questions and making sure we get them. So here's your opportunity. Get in there. Ask your questions, even though I have a pile of questions for Mary Lynn. So you got anything else to add, Mr. Woodham? Nope. A cat case. It's time for voiceover <laughs> body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard. The voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to voiceover body shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, JMC Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello out there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B B S body. Jeff, you were late that time. Yeah, really. Anyway, (laughs) welcome to another week. We're still sort of locked down here in California, although I think we're starting to get out a little bit more. Uh, Yesterday, Marcy and I got to go on a hike up in the mountains and we're like climbing over this ridge. And I see this trail on this one ridge that is like, you know, steep on both sides. And I'm like, that's the kind of nonsense that George rides his bike down. <laughs> Guilty so. as charged. I did the most <laughs> ultimate non- nonsense uh, thing the other day at the top of Westridge Road. If anybody knows this area, there's this chute. It's like a concrete 45 degree angle chute where, you know, debris and water would wash right. off the hillside. Right. I thought that would be fun to ride down. And? It didn't work out that well. At the bottom, <laughs> At the bottom of the chute, it had like a basically a sand pit because of everything that washes down there. And as I was about about to hit it, and I could tell, I I knew I was going to crash. I had that two like full second to go, oh, like this sort of in slow motion. And I hit that sand pit and over the handlebars. I'm okay. I just banged up my arm a little bit. It wasn't too bad. And this lady who was watching the whole thing, she's like, you know, there's an easier way to get down. I'm like. <laughs> Do you think <laughs> I do you think I chose the worst possible route because I didn't know how to get down the hill? <laughs> oh my god, I'm such a fool. But I, I guess I'm still twelve inside when I come when I get on a mountain bike. <laughs> I, I, I I guess so, but at least you're you're, you're taking I'm chances, fine. you're living life, that's the most important. I'm fine. Well, uh we're here to talk about voiceover for those of you who are joining us for the oh. first time. Yeah, hmm. maybe 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 you remember that. Hmm. That we talk about that. It was a mountain anyway, talk. We have a great guest tonight. Let me introduce her. Uh, you know, for the last 25 years, Mary Lynn Wisner, 
is an award-winning casting director and founder of Voices Voice Casting, and she's been hearing and casting the perfect voices for thousands of TV, radio, animation, film, games, virtual reality, industrials, podcasts, documentaries, toys, e-learning, IVR, audiobooks, promos, events, and dubbing publications. She's a busy lady. Let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Mary Lynn Wisner. Hey! Hello. Hello! Thank you for having me. This well, fun. thank you for being with us. Yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while. You know, things are changed. We're all like living in our little cubes yeah. here, and you know, not getting into the outside world. But uh, has has the the pandemic affected the casting business at all? You know, when it when it first hit, it was kind of slow, and then um, because I think everybody was sort of adjusting. But it's it, it it didn't last long, and it sort of stayed the same. I mean, thank goodness. Um, you know, I, I think most of us in voiceover kind of were used to being at home, recording from home, you know, working from home, uh, being sort of isolated anyway. So that part of it didn't change much. Uh, the type of advertising changed, of course. You know, we had all those what we call COVID reads. Yeah. But um, I saw that really together. I know we're all in this together. <laughs> uh, stand by together. Um, but I, I really start. I started to see that shift. You know, kind of like November of last year, the end of last year. So everything started to look a little more hopeful, which usually kind of happens once you have an election too. So uh, you know, and now it seems like everything's kind of getting back to the way it was before, pre-COVID. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, you know, like George and I, you must hear a lot of voices. I mean, mm -hmm. not in your head, on your speakers from other people. Yes. Um, you, what What are you hearing from people these days? I mean, you probably get a lot of, you get a lot of auditions, obviously. Uh, but I'm sure people are just sending you their stuff saying, hey, am I any good or anything like that? What do you, what do you, what have you been hearing? Um, I get everything. Uh, you know, I get, um, I mean, I've always received lots and lots of demos uh, via email. Um I, sometimes people send them to me through Facebook Messenger, which I wouldn't recommend because I usually don't check that that often. I always forget it's there. Um, and um, I'll get phone calls sometimes. May I send you a demo? Sure, that's fine. Um, I get uh, lately, and I, I was uh, you know mentioning this, I had put a post on Facebook because interestingly enough, I was starting to get a lot of people sending me their TikTok voiceover challenge uh, videos, which, you know, at first was kind of cute, but now it's just really annoying. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's not a demo, so don't do yeah. that. But right. most of the time, I just get lots and lots of demos, um, either from the talent themselves or from, you know, agents or managers. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. So you were sort of born into this business, weren't you? Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about how you got into all this. Um, well, yeah, I was born in the entertainment industry. Um, I grew up here in LA. My dad was a uh, TV producer. In fact, my grandfather kind of started in the, the movies back in the, the teens and 20s. Um, so I am a, a native um, Angelino, which is kind of cool. And I was a kid actor. I did a lot of uh, commercials and on camera commercials and stuff in school uh, when I was in high school and college. And um, I loved radio, but I didn't even know what voiceover was. And um, I got my degree in broadcast journalism um, and kind of fell into the world of voiceover because I really, I couldn't find a job right out of college. And I started working for um, one of the big voiceover agents at the time, John Pitts, and um, kind of started that way and then got into casting at The Voice Caster. And then after a couple of years there, I opened up my own company, um, Voices Voice Casting, in 1990. And I've been, you know, doing my own casting uh, through my company since then. So, um, and I, I still love it. I mean, because the cool thing about voiceover is, especially casting, every day is a different job. Every day you do something different. You know, um, it could be casting an animation project and then maybe a commercial or two and then maybe a narration thing so it's fun and for someone like me that that kind of likes that fast-paced constantly changing environment I love that and I love working with actors so it's it's very inspiring and just a lot of fun yeah once again we're talking with Mary Lynn Wisner if you're just joining us if you've got a question for 
throw it in the Facebook chat room and uh, we'll get to that question in just a little bit. So tell us a little bit about what the casting process is like. I think a lot of people, you know, they, 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 you know, they'll get an audition and they throw it down the pipe and it just goes into this void. And, <laughs> I get that. All, and actors ask me that, you know, cause I also coach voiceover um, and actors will always say to me, I know I've got a great voice and I've got a great agent and I'm getting great opportunities, but I'm just not booking what's happening. And I think it's really important to know what happens after you submit your audition. So, you know, we work mostly with ad agencies and production companies um, and producers, and we'll get a call, you know, just for instance, I'll get a call from an ad agency producer or account executive um, letting me know that they want to have us have me cast a project for them. And uh, we talk about it. I try to pick their brain as much as possible, you know, what they're looking for, maybe a celebrity prototype, just to kind of get an idea where they're leaning as far as the voice goes. And then we um, talk about the, the product as well as how the spot's going to run, what, um, uh, you know, what are, where it's going to, you know, what are the parameters as far as the talent goes? Can I bring in male and female? You know, all that kind of stuff. I try to get as much information from them as possible. And then, then what I do is kind of break that all down and draw up a uh, casting spec. And then I will either, depending on the spot, if it's a union or non-union, um, I will reach out to the voiceover agents. Um, and of course with COVID, you know, we didn't have anybody coming into a studio. So I would send that copy out to the agents. And I also work with talent that don't have representation because there's some fabulous talent out there that just haven't gotten an agent yet. Um, and whatever it is they're looking for, I'll throw that net out and get the, um, auditions out there and then collect them afterwards. And, um, nowadays with casting, you know, ad agency people in particular, they don't want to hear, you know, 40, 50 people. Um, they just want to hear the 10 to, I don't know, 20 best. The reason they hire a casting director is because they want us to do, you know, all that weeding out for them. So I might throw the net out pretty wide and get, you know, maybe 80 auditions back, but then I go through those 80 listen to the auditions and then the first pass I'm only listening to the first line and then I end up you know cutting that down to ultimately send them you know 10 to 20 or whatever they requested and then um, they'll get back to me and say oh we want to go with so and so or sometimes they come back and they say you know we have three choices we can't decide between you know George Dan and Jeff what do you know of them so if I know the actor I can speak to the you know the actor's uh, you know, background or whatever, or I, you know, give the agent a call or whatever. So, because I, that's my job as a casting director and then say, well, George is great because he's really fun with ad lib and, you know, or whatever. So um, that's how it works. And then we pick somebody, they get the job. And then a couple of weeks later or so we see it on TV and I get very excited. Yeah. And then you move on to the next one. And then we're doing the next one. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine there's probably several projects going on at once. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes there is. I love when that happens. <laughs> yeah. What is, What is your relationship to the agents? Well, I'm not talking personally here, but I mean, but you know, you you've established relationships with a lot of different agents and agencies. How does all that work? I mean, are they re, you know they're they know that they're going to go to you to do this type of casting, or you know, how does that all work? Well, um. Actually, some of it is personal because I'm I, I like to think that I'm friends with many of the agents. Um, so just it, it depends on the job, too, because there's some agents that I know, um, you know, especially if I'm looking for a specific type of voice. And I know, oh, if I call this particular agent, she's got um, five of those guys that are perfect. And maybe this one agent only has one person. So it doesn't really matter as long as I know it's the right, you know, fit. And there's certain agents, you know, um, most of them that I really, really trust. And I can just say, hey, give me your 10 best and I will get the 10 best from them. There's some agents that are a little bit more um, daring and I'll say, give me your 10 best and they might send back 25. So, uh, you know, sometimes that's a little difficult. But um, most agents, you know, I think most all voiceover agents really want to 
collaborate and and um, you know work closely with the casting director because then that just obviously establishes and continues a really good relationship. So um, I feel pretty good about you know knowing many of these agents for many many years and and trusting them and just working well together and and then you know collaborating on projects and booking some really nice jobs with them and and their clients. Mm-hmm. And, and some agents, oh, sorry, some agents are really good about, um, you know, just kind of keeping me updated, you know, with, hey, just wanted to let you know, we now have so and so or so and so just booked this great campaign. And just so I keep it on, on my radar. Once again, we're talking with Mary Lynn Wisner. Your questions are, of course, welcome. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we had Fred Melamed on, on the show, and he was great. He's just, just a wonderful guy. He was talking about really the state of the voiceover business, uh, you know, and the way he saw it. If you were good to describe what's going on in the voiceover business these days, mm-hmm. how, would, how would you describe it? Because I, I think you're one of those few people that I know that understands that there's, you know, it's a very wide ranging industry. You know, it's not just commercials. You know, you, you know that there's this other whole world out there that was mostly our viewers and listeners here mm-hmm. um, that are also trying to get into the business. But how do you, how do you see what the, the, the totality of the, the voiceover business these days? That's a great question. Um, it's totally different than when Fred started, for instance, um, than when I started. You know, I think we probably started around the same time or give or take a few years. But um you know, the, the non-union world is now completely dominating the voiceover industry. And not that that's a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily, you know, um, horrible, but it's, it's just something we all have to be aware of and watch because um, there are so many more uh, uh, talent out there than there were many years ago. There's so many more ways to get talent than there were many years ago. So for someone who's a veteran, like say Fred, for example, um, who's good, who's wonderful and has a beautiful voice. I could imagine that that would be very frustrating because back in the day, it used to be very easy. There was just a big group of voiceover actors here in LA and they pretty much got everything. Um, and nowadays the, the trends are different. You know, the sounds that they're looking for, the uh, platforms that there's, you know, so many more, uh, so many different platforms out there, not just in casting, but just ways that people hear voices and um, you know, budgets are different than they were and ad agencies that used to have agreements with the union as well as the talent agents don't have those anymore. And they have all kind of set up like their own little non-union divisions so they can do some major products under a non-union umbrella. So it's a really different um, kind of, atmosphere. And, you know, I think any voice actor really just has to be educated and learn and know and decide whether they want to play that game or this game or how they're going to, you know, maneuver that for their career. Um, Again, I'm not saying I'm not like condoning one way or the other. It's just that, you know, things change very quickly and and you kind of have to roll with the punches. So I don't know if that really answered your question, but Yeah. 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 Uh, what are some of the common mistakes you're seeing people make? I mean, you're, and can, you're dealing with professionals, people, you're not, you know, you're not seeing the hobbyists send things into you, although I'm sure you're probably getting a, a handful of those every now and again, but you know, there are people out there that have been doing this for a long time and they're not booking jobs. And what are some of the reasons for that? Um, there's a number of reasons for not booking those jobs or for, for maybe not making it past the first cut you know, when we first hear, you know, the, the audition, um, it's unbelievably. So, you know, you'd be shocked to hear this. A lot of it has to do with your sound quality. Um, right. You know, um, I, I sometimes I'm pretty shocked that some people's sound quality, it's not that it sound like they sound bad. It's just that maybe their levels were so low or, there's just this echoey noise in their booth or um, I don't know. There, there's just, uh, you know, maybe they didn't edit correctly um, or they took every single breath out. You know, there's, there's a lot of things like that, that uh, I cannot pass on to my client. You know, I feel like as a casting director, the reason they're coming to us 
versus going to a pay to play where they get it just done for free is we are sifting through all that crap and we're giving them the best of the best. So as a voice actor, you know, do yourself a favor and check your sound um, and, uh, you know, make sure everything's as close to clean as possible. Um, also, when it comes to your performance as an actor, what are you doing to stand out on that audition? Because you have to remember, you know, I've, if I'm getting 80 auditions, you're all going to kind of sound the same to me because you fit the specs. You got that copy because you fit the specs. Right. So what are you going to do to not sound like the other guy that is in the same spec range as you are and so on. So things like that are very important. And that's stuff you'll learn from a really good coach. Um, and obviously just doing it, you know, enough times and, and, um, but yeah, your sound quality and your performance obviously are very important because some agents, as much as we like to think, and a lot of them do, so I'm not you know, picking on anyone in particular, um, don't always listen to the auditions before they submit them. They might just be too busy and it's like, okay, here's, we gotta get these off to Mary Lynn or wherever. And they don't listen back to their actor's auditions. You know, I've heard some auditions where an actor made a mistake in the middle and then, you know, used a curse word or something. And sometimes it can be kind of funny, but I right. don't wanna send that to my client. You know, sometimes so. the actors don't listen back to their own auditions. Yeah, Trust exactly. me, based on what I'm hearing, people send me sometimes. I know, I know. So, what are you listening to your auditions on? That was Those a headphones. Good next question. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's actually you. Know, most of the time, yeah, headphones. Um, and I just have a, I have a two computers. I have a big uh, desktop Mac and a and a laptop as well. So you could be listening to them on these headphones. You right, could be listening or just to them on the headphones. computer speakers. Speakers, I mean, sorry, yeah. You could be listening to you could be listening to them in a variety of different environments. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I figure a lot of people are you know listening to their auditions or listening to on their phone, you know, and they, perhaps they're not getting the audio quality. They're not hearing the low end. They're not hearing all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it, it's important that you know, you know, as George and I always say, if it sounds good, it is good. But <laughs> but if you don't know matter. what good sounds like or you don't have a proper way to listen to something, you can't yeah. really judge it accurately. I had someone that had been working with me for several months or had worked with me and then was sending me audio and I was going, What this is never sounding the way <laughs> it should sound. And to her credit, she booked some more time. We did a one on one, we talked it over, and she was only ever playing back her audio through her computer speakers. Um that was and she had she literally didn't own a pair of headphones and you know, it's kind of funny. You just, I don't think sometimes to ask the very basic things. How are you listening to what you're recording? Um, mm -hmm. She just didn't hear what it is she was missing. And then when I had her get her good headphones and really showed her how to listen, she was, then she, it, it clicked. Right. You know, but you really do have to listen to what you're sending out. Yeah. I you think the, the main thing is, I mean, because initially, I think most of the time, I guess it just sort of depends on the job, but I think initially I'm listening on headphones. And then um, kind of when I make my top picks, um, I listen back on the computer speakers because I often think that's how my client is listening to them. Mm, good um, point. And, yeah. And if something, and by the way, if, if something doesn't sound good and I know that actor really has a shot at it, like they might've done a really great audition. It's just the sound quality. I, I will call the actor directly if I, if I know them or call their agent and say, hey, really loved his take. Can you just have him redo it? Because the sound sounded, you know, funny. And everybody's, you know, usually very happy to do that. Oh, God. The best yeah. thing they can ever hear is that you're in the running, but the sound quality isn't quite right. Get it straightened yeah. out. Other than, and, and, that's much better than getting absolutely zero feedback. Right, and just right. never getting a call and going, what the heck's going on here? Right. And I again, I mean, that goes back to my, that's my job. My job is to find the perfect voice for my client. And I don't want to take somebody out of the running if their sound quality wasn't great, but their performance was good. You know, right. I know they can fix that. Yeah. Right. So what is it that people can do to break out of the crowd? I mean, this is, it is an absolute tsunami of voiceover people out there right now. Yeah. How do you, how do you break through, you know, the surf there and, and get yourself noticed. I mean, what, what is it that you're looking for that, you know, that says this person, not that person. And you know, what, what, what is, what is the sieve like? 
You know, for me, it's always that first line, that first line of copy, because, um, you know, and, and this is just kind of basic knowledge to me. It's what I kind of coach too. But that first line, um, and, and just to give you an idea, when we're casting, if I have 80 auditions to listen to, um, I, on the first pass of listening to all those auditions, I only listen to the first line initially because I, you know, I've been doing this long enough. I can tell from the first line, you know, does he sound great? Does he sound, does he fit the specs? Did he sound like he was talking to me or did he sound like he was reading to me? You know, there's, there's things that I kind of have like a checklist that I go through. And if one or two of those are not where I think they should be, then I don't even bring that person to the next step. Um, because ultimately with any voiceover, you know, you, you, got, you guys have heard this from every coach you've ever talked to as well. You know, you always want it to sound like you're talking to somebody, not like you're reading to them. Right. Um, so if that, and, and there's certain things people do that um, certain inflections and, and things that they do that right away, give it away that you are reading versus talking. So, um, you know, these are things that I'm listening for. And like I said before, you have to remember that, yeah, there's 80 people on there. And for the most part, like I said, you're all going to kind of sound the same to us because you fit the specs. So what are you going to do differently that the guy and gal before you did or didn't do? And that's what's really important. So make that first line, you know, something that's you, something, obviously the whole read should be you, but something that's going to be a little bit different and not reedy. So, and that's what a good coach will teach you as well. Yeah. I, I, some people just are afraid to take that leap of faith. Sometimes they really, they just want to like, they want to play it safe. And, you know, sometimes I think, you know, maybe half a quart of vodka might help before I do this audition. And <laughs> well, that's quarter. why, I mean, but that's why they don't get bookings, you know? And again, it's not, I'm not being like crass when I say that. And I'm not saying that you even have to ad lib or do a lead in. Of course not. Right, right. It's just, there's a certain um, technique and there's certain, um, uh, you know, things that you can do as an actor, as a voice actor that will, I promise you, make you sound different than other people, yeah. you know? So um, it's, it's, it is acting as you guys all know, you know, it's, it is about acting. It's interpreting that copy. It's, it's creating a scene and figuring out what the intent of the spot is and, you know, the copywriter, what they're trying to say and, and so on. But overall, yeah, you're still selling something, but it's how not to sound like you're selling something. And most people sound like they're selling something when they're just reading the copy and they're not creating a, you know, a moment in time. Mm-hmm. Once again, we're talking with Mary Lynn Wisner. She is a casting director, a coach, you know, and a bunch of other things. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> all nice. All good. <laughs> what, now, what, yeah. Now in, in, in your, in your coaching and, uh, you know, some of the work you do, one of the things you have is something called the VO pros. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. Um, thanks. The VO Pros, um, we started that, gosh, I, I think it's been 12 years now. And um, at the time when I started it, there was nobody else doing events where you could, in the voiceover industry, where you could come and learn from a voiceover professional. There was lots of those going on in the on-camera world, um, but nobody was doing anything in the voiceover world. So I just, I thought, well, shoot, you know, all these agents are my friends. And plus I was coaching as well. Um, I, all these agents are my friends. I have many producers um, from ad agencies and, you know, animation houses and, and promo departments and so on that are my friends. So I'm going to ask them if they want to come and be a guest and actors can, you know, glean and learn and everything from them. So that's how that started. And, um, we used to always call it meet the pros. And then um, a few years ago, I tried to get that URL and it was taken somewhere else. So we call it the VO pros now, but right. it's still, everybody still refers to it as meet the pros. Um, and we have, you know, guest um, agents come on. We have uh, uh, casting directors from all the animation houses all over video game companies. Um, I'll have promo producers, uh, trailer house producers, you know, I've had coaches, I've got, you know, people that are experts in their particular fields, you know, like, uh, 
we've got Tracy Lindley coming up, who's going to teach us all about LinkedIn. You know, we've got, um, uh, you know, we had Scott Parkin come and do a whole improv night. So it's, um, it's really great. Uh, it's a great opportunity, not only to get in front of these people, but to hear their process and then learn from them and, and get to read in front of them and get direction and some feedback on their reads and so on. So it's been a great networking tool and just a lot of fun. And so uh, just it, it gives me a lot of pride because so many great connections have been made over the years. And I, and I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been to a few and they're They are a lot of fun and you meet some fascinating people. Yeah. Yeah. And, I've, and this whole past year, of course, we've done them all via Zoom which is wonderful because people that were not in LA and were always frustrated that they couldn't come. So are able to join us now. So we've had people all over the world come in on some of our classes and we keep them kind of small, never more than I think like 15 is about the most we've ever had. So it's anywhere from like eight to 15 people. And um, yeah, it's just a really fun, fun opportunity. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Mary Lynn Wisner. And as I suspected, when we bring the people on, who are responsible for hiring you guys out there. You there are a lot of questions. Lots of questions. So we're going to take Absolutely. a break right now and we'll get to those right after this. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Bill Farmer and you are watching voice over body shop. It's great. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat. Were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Hi, here I am in my normal workspace with a question. What's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VRHeroes.com want to know. They're creating new courses and training, and they want to know what you need most. And it's easy to let them know. Just drop an email to david at VOHeroes.com. That's david at V-O-H-E-R-O-E-S.com. And let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it auditioning? Is it about booking more work? Finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions, whatever it is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or what you've always wanted to know about success in VO. Email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. I was talking to Harlan Hogan this morning. He described Chicago as having permafrost with more snow on the way, but something warmed his heart. A letter from a satisfied voiceover essentials customer. And here's what he said. Hi, Harlan. Getting started in the voiceover business and want a big value for your dollar? Look no further than Harlan's Portabooth Pro and the VO1A mic. These got me started and have proven valuable in producing over 50 titles on Audible. Great results for a great price right out of the box. Douglas Burke, the agile narrator. So if you do audiobooks, clearly these two products from voiceoveressentials.com can help you get it done. Go on over to voiceoveressentials.com to see all the great voiceover recording equipment and accessories you'll ever need. That's voiceoveressentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature series products like the VO1A mic and the Porter Booth Pro and Plus. Thanks, Harlan. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Welcome back. And we are back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. I'm still getting used to this camera being so close. <laughs> I know. You're used to it being all the way across the room, and now it's only two feet away. It's less than two feet. So yeah. I'm staring into this. It looks like a robot. 
You yeah. need to have like your hand distance, like your mic. Yeah, exactly. Just, just <laughs> like that. <laughs> Perfect distance. Anyway, we're talking with Mary Lynn Wisner, and boy, you guys have tons and tons of questions, as I suspected you would. George, why don't you take that first one from uh, Lonnie Manila? The very top. Uh, yeah, Lonnie or Laney. Laney Manila. If you have two completely different sounding auditions, should you say one of two, then two on the same file, or submit the second take? as a file named alt. Yeah. Or should you even slate it that way? Um, you know, <laughs> that's a good question because usually when I get two um, takes, that's because I've asked for two takes. When I'm putting a casting call out, I always am very specific in the casting specs. Well, I'll say only one take, please, or two takes, um, and so I know to expect a second take. So I guess it kind of depends on where you're getting your audition from. Um, and most mm. casting directors are pretty specific about that. But um, if it was me and listening to, you know, say auditions like that, and if say I didn't write that down on the casting specs, I would say in your, you know, in your slate, you can say, you know, um, two takes, and then I know to expect another take. Um, I personally don't even like slates. I just like to see your name on the MP3 file and you can put, you know, your name, um, McDonald's um, underscore two takes, you know, something like that. Um, sometimes if you have too much information other than the read itself, it's very distracting to the casting director because, you know, we you kind of get in this mindset and you're listening and then you get sort of almost a little bit distracted when somebody slates their name and then they go second take. And um, so it's, it's sort of a personal thing. I think, you know, if it, if it doesn't say on the casting spec itself, I would just say your name and two takes and then just leave a little bit of a space between the takes. So we know to expect it. Right. That's good. I thought you were going to, I thought that wasn't such an obvious or, or sort of an obvious question, but it wasn't. So I'm glad she. No, it's really not it. because I think it really does depend on the source you're getting it from true yeah always read the spec always pay very close attention yeah. to the instructions yeah right? so that is a good question um the other part of those is actually a two-parter there's no way to know if one's agent is submitting your auditions uh when i do casting and submit a large number of actors i'm often surprised who the client chooses oh interesting often not the best or who fits the specs closest is there any actual way to ensure being submitted since it's often very subjective no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, it's that sometimes it, I'm I'm not surprised. I mean, sometimes we'll do a casting, and I'd be like, "Oh, for sure, George is going to book that. He just nailed it." And then the client comes back with someone who I thought was, I mean, obviously I thought they were good because I submitted them, right. but I wasn't thinking they were the most unique or what. You know, I I was surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, and you never know. You just never know. Um, I've had you know, ad agency clients choose somebody because, um, sounded like my old boyfriend or, Oh, his, his name is Jeff. That's my brother's name. You know, I've heard all kinds of things I've heard. So it just really, really depends. And it might just be the one way you said a certain word or just kind of your phrasing that, that hit something in them. It's a very, um, subjective. It's, it's very personal a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. many times I've, I've, you know, I'll hear some spot and I'll go, I auditioned for that. And they hired this guy. Yeah. I don't, I don't quite, I don't quite get Why? that. Yeah. It's, it's very I individual. It fabulous. Anyway, I'm question sure. from, from, uh, Sonia Mobley. She says she wants to know if you're going to have any zoom workshops coming up soon. Everett Oliver suggested I work with, uh, with you. And was signed up for one she did at the uh, Atlanta voiceover studio, but it was rescheduled and she couldn't make the new one and haven't seen anything else upcoming. So you have any other workshops coming up? Yeah. If you just check our website, the vopros.com, you'll see all the classes coming up. Um, if it's for me personally, you know, if you just want to do personal one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can just go right to, um, voices voice casting at gmail and, and reach out to me um and sometimes i'll post my workshops up on the vo pros as well 
Um, I'll probably do one. I'm thinking like June, you know, cause I usually do one or two a year and right now I'm just so busy. I haven't had time to organize one. So the probably, I usually do one or two a year on uh, self direction for, um, for voiceover. Yeah, so probably look towards the summer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, do you still have the app or about yeah. to do that? Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so about, I don't know, maybe, uh, let me think here, uh, about 10 years ago, I created the app called the VoiceOver Self-Direction app because, um, you know, for years in all my coaching, I, I have this process of, you know, breaking down commercial scripts and how to break them down. And actors would always say, oh, I love that. I wish you could be in the booth with me. And um, so I thought, I'm going to create an app for that. So it's kind of everything I teach or how to, you know, in basically in an app, you know, the five popular directions that are the foundation for commercials and um, different little tricks and things that you can do to make your audition stand, stand out. Because as we know, 90% of your auditions, you are, well, now it's pretty much 99% of your auditions, you are self-directing, you're auditioning from home. And um, yeah, it's on your um, Apple or, you know, Android device. It's been pretty successful. I'm very, very proud of it. A few years ago, we added um, character, uh, how to self-direct yourself on um, character reads if you get a video game or an animation audition. So um, That's awesome. check it out. Yeah, it's called the VoiceOver Self-Direction app. I need to put that on my site. I yeah, and if you, if you can't find it, you can always just look up my name and it'll come up. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Sue Merlito doing her job. <laughs> All righty. That's what we like to see. Yeah, I, I've got that app. It's right next to my Starbucks app. So. Oh, perfect. Perfect. It's easy to Mary find. Lynn and a little caffeine. We're all good. <laughs> That's right. Uh, George, one from Shelly. Yeah, uh, Shelly asked, uh, firstly, <laughs> it's been way too long since we've had a drink together. And second... <laughs> <laughs> a little Welsh you just, friend. You could picture her. Oh, there she is on screen. You don't even have to picture her oh, if you're watching yeah. the show on camera, uh, not the podcast version. Um, as a casting director, too, I'm interested to hear the biggest changes that you've seen, if any, during the pandemic with the amount of work and type of work you've been seeing. What is your one pet peeve also oh my gosh. that voiceovers do that drive you nuts? So that's a two-parter, but uh... um, yeah. So during during the, I think I I think the question was what what did I see changing changes during the, during the pandemic? Yeah. Um, you know what's funny? Right before the pandemic, as you all know, so like 2018, 2019, everything was about the millennial read, um, and then of course the pandemic hit hit, and then everything was all about you know what we called the COVID read and the. I'm here for you. We're here reassuring. together. La la la. You know, everything yes. very cozy and warm and and kind and reassuring. And then um, uh, it did change a bit, but at the same time, I noticed we rarely got any calls all last year, all 2020, for uh, millennial, which I was kind of happy about. So we didn't get those calls. In fact, um, I remember one ad agency guy saying to us, I need an older millennial, which just is <laughs> like, not a, like a Gen Xer or something. Um, so that's me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that, was, that was kind of funny. Um, I'm an old but, millennial. Dun, but, dun, dun. but now Sorry. everything is way downplayed, which kind of bounces off the millennial read, which was sort of a downplayed read, but younger. But now every read, even when you're doing sort of the authoritative financial ad sort of thing, they want it just very calm, just talking, throwing it away. Not a whole lot of nuance at all. That is really, really what's in style. Um, so I think that was her question. And what was the other one? The pet peeves? Pet thing? peeves. My um, pet peeves are people ask two questions. No, I'm just kidding, yeah. Shelly. We love <laughs> yeah, you. but it's Shelly. We love Shelly. <laughs> just kidding. Um, she's a fun gal. Um, pet peeves are... <sighs> Uh, where do I start? Let's see. You know, I don't know if I really have a specific pet peeve. Um, and I don't know if she means like when you're auditioning or just in general. Um, I guess one bad big acoustics. Pet, well, that and then one pet, <laughs> one pet peeve of mine, oh, that's mine. is um, you know people calling me Mary instead of Mary Lynn because mm. um, Mary Lynn is my name. Um, so you know 
if you're going to reach out to a casting director or an agent or anybody in any, you know, this goes for any business, get their name right. You know, that's just, I think, kind of common courtesy. That's just professional. For yeah. Uh, Jeff Holman asks, what do you think about adding a lead in to the first line to differentiate your read from others? So in other words, not starting from the beginning, but from a lead in, do you see that much? And can that be effective or is that a yeah. real thing? I'm, I'm kind of known for that. Um, I'm known for loving that actors do that, especially, especially when it's a real person read or a very, you know, the wry, dry, sarcastic, snarky read. Hmm. Um, we kind of expect that, you know, that in casting, um, we expect actors to do that. Many actors are very nervous about doing that. So when I'm putting that casting spec out there, I always say, feel free to ad lib, you know, let's hear your improv skills. And the reason I do that is because number one, I want the actor to know it's okay. I want to hear hmm. it. I've already checked with my producer. They don't mind. And, um, honestly, the people that do that are usually the ones that book, you know, um, wow. Now, if it, you're doing it on an authoritative read or kind of like a sexy cosmetic read, it usually doesn't work. It sounds gratuitous. It just doesn't work. Even kind of a basic, nice, warm, friendly read, it usually doesn't work. But it has to mean something to the script. Um, I, I, there was a whole Facebook thread about this not too long ago. When I say a lead in, I don't mean, yeah, well, Hey, you know, you know, so, because <laughs> I promise you, if I got 80 auditions back, I guarantee you at least 25 or 30 people will do the exact same lead in. So you don't sound original. You don't sound super, you know, it's like, you, you know, you thought you were doing a really great job of doing this fabulous lead in. Well, so did, you know, 39 other people. Um, like uh, so, like if it's like if it's like a character of an older gentleman, maybe you might say, "Let me fix my glasses." Um, this is a bit of something like it, that. Whatever, like, if it works with the script, yeah. you know, I always tell actors, um, you know, riff on a word in the first line, you know, um, and kind of make that your lead in, or pretend you're answering a question and kind of riff on that. So it's it's this is why improv is so valuable and acting, of course, for I'm voice. glad Jeff asked that because I had this impression in my mind, maybe I'd heard somebody else say this, that those were fine to use in, in your to get you the you to get you to get there, but to take them out when you submit, edit those out. So you're saying no. No. This could be should be And this there. has always been a discussion. Um and yeah. again, I always say to people and, and I don't mean this again to sound snotty. Right. I always say, Well, I bet the person that told you that was not a casting director. Mm. <laughs> because we <laughs> we know we know that it's okay to leave it in because Good. the people that book are the ones that leave it in. And mm. I always bring this up too. Um, you know, in my thirty years of casting, I have never, ever, ever had a producer or a client come back to me and say, I can't believe they ad-libbed. I can't believe they did that. They don't say that, you know? Um, but then again, too, I'm always very specific. And I ask my client, you know, when we're initiating this casting, you know, hey, if the actor wants to do some lead-ins or an ad-lib, is that cool? Yeah, great, fine. And you know what? Give them one take where you showed, you, I always say, show off your party tricks. Do all that stuff on the first take. Mm. And then on the second take, stick straight to the script. But this is only for the real person read and the rye dry, you know, snarky, quirky read. You got to know the context. You got to know exactly. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to get. I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right. I'm so glad he asked that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, This one's from Cassie Mockler. I'm hoping that's right. Um, what are directors looking for in a good audition? That's probably a pretty big question. But good acting. Good acting. Go. A big question with an easy answer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good it's, acting. It's all about, <laughs> you know, do you sound like, you know, as I said earlier, do you sound like you're talking to me? Yep. Or are you reading to me? I, I don't need anybody to read to me. I can, I can get, you know, my mom to do that. I, I need somebody to sound like they're talking to me. So it, you know, basically, uh, you know, it all boils down to we want the consumer who's watching this on, you know, their, their TV or driving their car, listening to the radio to feel like you're next to them talking about this product. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Heath Martin asks if an actor has a commercial demo, but not a character demo for animation or video games, would you want to hear from them or should they wait until they have a professional demo 
in every genre first? That's a good question. Um, I, I, well, if it's for an animation or a character thing, then of course I'd want to hear a character demo specifically. But um, if you have only a commercial demo, send it. I mean, commercials, I always say the first demo you should make should be your commercial demo. Commercials are the bread and butter of our industry. Commercials are cast every single day. Um, and the first demo an agent is going to ask for is your commercial demo. Um, you know, even if you only want to do video games, you know, you still need to do your commercial demo first. Um, if it's for a specific part and I need to hear character reads, I might, and if I know the actor and I know they don't have a character demo, I might just say, hey, you know what? Um, I've got this client. He wants to hear a demo. I know you don't have a demo, but can you just go in the booth and record maybe three or four different characters so I could submit that to him? And that, that rarely happens, but I hope I'm answering his question. Um, but yeah, uh, if, if you only have a commercial demo, send me the demo. All right, thank you. This one's from Linda Joyce Miner. Have you heard about the change in demos? Some directors are now requesting no background music, etc. They just want to hear the voice. Is it a good idea? I actually had to redo three of my demos. I didn't mind at all. That's what Linda says. Good question. Interesting. I have not heard that, to be very honest. With you. Who are these directors? <laughs> it's um, a good question, right? Are no. they ad agency hmm. people? I, I've not yeah. heard that. And if that... Um, I have actually had a producer once ask, you know, hey, instead of submitting, because sometimes um, some producers, like they might have a very small budget or they have no budget and they'll say, can you just mm. send us demos? Um, or if it's say it's a big job and I, you know, I know a certain like actor could do something, I'll say, well, I'll just have him read a, a, a script so you can hear his voice. But um, I've not actually heard that. So I don't know that that's a thing. Mm. Um, but that's yeah. kind of interesting. This happens a lot in our business too, Dan. will Dan will uh, completely corroborate that. You know, you'll get the somebody told me that. Blah yeah. blah I, blah I always, blah. That's what I'm saying I always want to know who is that somebody because <laughs> you know again, and that's what I always say. Yeah, yeah. Who, said said that you? You? who said that to you? Who are these direct? When you say directors, there's like no in this industry. There's nobody that's yeah. really a director. Everybody's like. You know, um, there's an ad agency producer, there's a casting director, but there's also, you know, an agent, there's a, you know, a tech person and all that sort of thing. So a director, uh, that's, yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe an animation director. I, I'm not quite mm. sure. I'd be curious to, to see if there's a follow up to her question. Yeah, it, it, it may be a matter of, you know, it was an e-learning demo or a narration demo or something. Right. You really and, don't. and then I kind of get that. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, that I get, but not, and in an audio book demo, you don't have anything but your own voice. Yeah. So. Yeah. JV Martin, the one. Ah, JV. He My says that for self-directed auditions, when to always ad lib, when never ad lib. Well, JV should know this because we used to coach <laughs> together, but actually we coached a lot on narration. Um, Oh, no, we did commercial JV, uh, but that was a while ago. So as I said, I think always ad lib on a real person read and a wry, dry, snarky read, unless it just doesn't, it's not funny or it doesn't add to the script, you know, because sometimes people try to ad lib because they think they have to, and it just sounds very, you know, gratuitous and, and it sort of just doesn't work. It's not funny. Um, but you know, it's, it's letting us know your personality. They're not going to end up using it in the um, commercial because obviously if it was a union spot, they'd have to pay you more because then you're a writer. Um, but it's what gets you noticed on the audition reel. That's the whole purpose of that um, because they want to hear how much fun you're going to be at the session. So if you have something kind of funny to say and it wants to spit out, let it come out. We want to hear it. So... And, and usually that's why I'm saying like the real person reads and the, the rye and dry, snarky, quirky, you know, a la John Krasinski, Chris Pratt reads are the ones that really lend itself to that. I hope yeah. that helped, JB. Couldn't hurt. I'm sure it did. Yeah, okay. um, time for Thomas, one more, George. Oh, we got one more? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh. Let me just scan real quick to see what the big, big, big question is. Um, big question. 
Well, we didn't get one from Thomas, so we'll, we'll throw it to Thomas's okay. here. Um, he says, for auditions, I'm seeing that they are wanting your gear slated at the end. Are there any good or bad parts about this? What is the best thing or detail to give or avoid? Is this happening? I haven't seen that. Not with any of my clients. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a pay-to-play thing. Um, oh, we yeah. have clients that will ask um, for their, you know, if their ISDN or Source Connect, you know, or they'll sometimes ask us to have the talent label what city they're in. But um, I have not actually had a, an ad agency client ask for their studio gear and so on. So, I, I yeah, I would, I would just follow the directions. If they ask for yeah. it, then you better say it. You know, that's yeah. all. Follow I the specs. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's another that can go back to the pet peeve thing. Follow the specs. <laughs> if, you know that they're there for a reason. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Well, Marilyn, as always, it's a pleasure to, to, to talk with you. It's more fun, I think, actually hanging out with you when we get to go to dinners and stuff like yeah. that. I know. I miss those days. I know. Well, they'll be back. They'll I be know. back. They'll be People back. want to get a hold of you. Tell us uh, about your website and what you offer there. Thank you. And it's always fun to hang out with you guys. Thank you. Um, it's uh, Voices Voice Casting, one long word, dot com. And then um, our classes and all that fun stuff is thevopros.com. Um, my email is voicesvoicecasting at gmail. And um, yeah, and then of course, like uh, we talked about earlier, the, the voiceover self-direction app. And um, what else? I'm a Virgo. Uh, <laughs> I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. I'm 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 around. I've been around for a long time, and and I'm happy to help anyway. You ain't going nowhere either. Yeah. Yeah. And we know where to find you. All yeah. right. we're ready for the we're, we're ready for the Roaring Twenties again. Roaring Twenties yeah. Part Two. Yeah, Part Two. Thank oh, you good. guys. Love you. Thank you so much for having Love me. You too. Take yeah. care. All right. All right. We'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Bishop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, you're, you're climbing the voiceover ladder. You're booking bigger gigs. You might even have an agent or two at this point. So guess what? You better have Source Connect. This is a, a, a technology that's been in development and in use now, more than development. It's been development for over 15 years, but it's been in use regularly in the voiceover business for, well, geez, at least 12 or 13 that I've been setting it up for folks. And so because it's been around for so long, it was very well uh, positioned when the pandemic hit and we were all stuck at home. And uh, so that is the tool of choice. And there are many out there, trust me, that you may find in your in your journey as a voice actor. But the one that is most pervasive shows up more on any spec for an audition and we all know how important specs are. You just heard what Marilyn had to say about the specs. It's going to be Source Connect. And so you better have that on your system by now. If you're listening or watching our show and you don't have it already, maybe you're not a voice actor yet. Maybe you're just kicking the tires or maybe you're not quite ready. But everybody else at this point, I'm sure, has probably done it. And they've gone over to source-elements.com, dash, source dash signed up for a 15-day free trial, got it up and running on their system, and possibly even headed over to georgethe.tech and went to my site to make sure there's extra things you might need to know about Source Connect that maybe you missed the first go around and got a little help from me too. But anyway, get Source Connect, be ready, be a pro, 
have the tools that pros need, and this is definitely one of them. So thanks so much for Source Elements support after five, at least five, six years now. We really appreciate it. And we'll be back to wrap it up. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. And we are back. Uh, we got a re-racket to do Tech Talk. You know, we do Tech Talk when we do the show live. We do Tech Talk afterwards. A lot of people like to watch it in replay. But if you want to mm -hmm. be active and you want to watch when we do it live and ask questions live, we'd love to have you. So stick around after we finish with this particular show. Uh, next week, we'll have Tech Talk number 52. Yes. If you don't, it's, they're starting to add up. In two weeks, Mark Grau will be here to help us celebrate our 10th year of uh, doing voiceover body show officially, officially 10 years. And we'll tell the story again. It's sort of like Passover where we tell the story of how it all happened. Um, who are our donors of the week? Yes. Again, many recognizable names, which is awesome. Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Martha Kahn, Shauna Pennington Baird, Antland Productions, Philip Sapir, Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino, hey, Shelly, George Whittem, that's my dad, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Rader, and Greg Thomas. Thank awesome. you so much for all of your support. Absolutely. Really, really appreciate it. It's, it's great that you help us out to, to produce this show and maintain the technical superiority and magnificenceness of it all. If either of those are words. The splendor. Yeah, it's splendor. The grandeur. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC Demos. Our thanks to Jeff Holman, who really did a great job in the chat room tonight uh, getting your questions to Mary Lynn, uh, and uh, our technical director, Sue Merlino, sharp as a tack tonight, That's just worthy. right there with it. And of course, Lee Pinney for being Lee Penny. Anyway, uh, you know, this is not an easy business, but we're here to help you uh, get your sound right, to get your career in the right direction by bringing you the right people. But really, it comes down to one thing. If it sounds good. Yeah. Oh, if it, it is good. good. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to re-rack it for Tech Talk. We'll see you next time, guys. Have a great week.